Oh boy, we finally made it here. Buckle your seatbelt sprouts because this is gonna be a doozy. Yes, this is a practical healing guide. And yes, we're gonna talk about how to use cards and job specific skills, even though they're not healing. And yes, I'm gonna give you all my secret tips, fundamentals to Astro and what to watch out for in this video. Disclaimer, this is gonna be a long video with tons of information, but if you wanna learn Astro, do I have a video for you. If you are a beginner or casual player that is hesitant on playing healer classes, I'm gonna provide you a practical healing guide from level one to end game. This is not a pep talk or encouraging words. This is a step-by-step -step guide in order to build confidence and begin understanding the job. Hello everyone, my name is Stefan Ash and today I have another Final Fantasy guide for you. If you get any value out of this video, then use that limit break three and smash that subscribe button down below. Let's jump into the video. There is a lot of controversy with healers if they should DPS or just heal and I operate under the belief that I want to be as helpful and efficient as possible. Being helpful means healing and damaging and utilizing my job to the best of my abilities. Here are a few beginner tips that I do when playing any healing class at the start of the dungeon and just general information. Number 1. Astrologian will take some time to get the feel for it. Do not be discouraged if you don't get everything right away because it is a bit of a learning curve. So you understand my perspective, I'll be showing you Astro on a controller for PC. If you need any help setting up controller settings, I have this video right here to help with that. So as far as targeting and actual gameplay, it might be a little different with mouse and keyboard, but the theory and the practices are the same. Tip number two. Check your tank's gear. You'll want to start understanding if someone is overgeared or undergeared. They will take slightly more damage if undergeared and take slightly less damage if they're overgeared. Tip number three check DPS gear. For the same reasons as the tank, if the DPS are over or under geared, they can provide more damage or less damage depending on the stats, and you'd want to factor that in to your tank healing and party healing. Tip number four, maintain your item level gear. This means to keep your gear as close to the dungeon level as possible under level 50. Once you hit level 50, you can use poetics to gear, which I have this video right here explaining on how to do that up until end game. Under 50, you have to be more thoughtful about it and replace anything that is getting too far behind, as this will affect your healing ability tremendously. Okay, before jumping in level content, there's something you have to understand. Astro is generally considered a more advanced healer role and considered a more complex job than the other two healers. Not only with its faster spell speed and faster cast times, you really gotta manage MP better, which we'll talk about later on. If you feel you have troubles managing your MP, then generally it's a good practice to keep some sort of MP recovering potions with you during battle. As with Astro, things can go south pretty quickly. Level 1 to 29 content. This is generally the same as all the other healers. You have your basic heal, benefic, your damage over time, or dot, combust, with your main damage spell, malefic. I'm not really sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but that's how I'm going to say it for this video. This is where you need to get used to dotting enemies as your tank is pulling, heal tank as needed, damage enemies, and keep lucid dreaming on cooldown, which is your MP regeneration ability. Dungeon pulls will look something like this. Tank pulls aggro, dot enemies as you're running, and then damage with malefic as tank stops. Pop lucid dreaming as soon as your first malefic cast since your cast time is generally faster. When you get Essential Dignity, which is just an OGCD or off global cooldown ability, you will utilize this ability when the tank is about half health for a quick and easy top up on HP. Let's dive a little deeper on a few skills worth noting here. Lucid Dreaming. Keep this on cooldown during battle. Between pulls, you'll recover MP pretty well, but if the tank is pulling big, you might even want to keep this going between pulls. This is going to be a huge mitigator for making sure to keep your MP up from here till the end of the game. Helios. This is your AoE heal. Useful now, but becomes less so later on. Just use this to make sure that you keep your party members topped off if they're taking any damage. Light Speed. 
This is an amazing ability that allows you to instantly cast spells for 15 seconds. Yes, you heard that right, instant cast spells. Although it is instant, something to understand, it does not inherently make you do more damage. It only front loads the damage, but you still have a recast timer that you have to wait for for any spell. The usefulness of this is if you need super quick healing for the party because they're going to die or they took a lot of damage, early on you can get used to using this. For party-wide healing or if the tank's health is getting too low for your comfort and you want to heal him back up really quickly. As this is a beginner guide, I will not be going into every single advanced use for skills. I'm going to leave that up to you to search and to dive deeper into the job yourself. One more thing to be wary of is because spells are instant cast, you can really run out of MP very quickly. So you want to make sure that you're looking at your MP management or using lucid dreaming when you use this ability. Education time. It is time, let's talk about the draw system for Astro. This is not difficult, tedious, but not hard. Let's go over it. You have the ability draw, which allows you to draw a card, which will be random of six cards. You have the ability play, which is your cast ability for the cards. I'm gonna break this down as simply as possible. If the card has a blue outline, it buffs melee and tanks damage by 6% or range and healers by 3%. If the card outline is pink, it buffs range and healers by 6% and melee and tanks by 3%. That is it. Don't overcomplicate it. Too many people try to memorize each card and their effects. None of that matters. Blue outline is for melee and pink outline is for range generally. You always want to prioritize this no matter what. Draw has a 30 second cooldown and MP recovery. This is our second MP mitigator and why you don't want to be holding onto cards for too long. You want to keep draw on cooldown for the most part and always throw out your buffs. Do not overwrite a buff with another draw. You would have wasted 6% damage to someone else. Because Astro doesn't have a healing specific job skill and it's damage buff, let's talk about priorities for Astro. You are first a healer and healing always takes priority. So if I had to list it out, it's going to be healing, card buffs, damage. That being said, it isn't really that hard to do all three as it all works in tandem and flows pretty nicely in battle. But if you miss a card or throw out a wrong card, don't beat yourself up about it. It's a learning curve and you will most likely make some mistakes. Okay, so here's my secret tip for Astro. Go into character configuration, scroll over to the party list and change your party list depending on the role you're playing, either tank, healer, or DPS. You can click each role and I recommend the DPS healer tank sort, which puts all the DPS at the top, which makes it easy access to give the buffs to the DPS. I put the tank at the bottom, so all I have to do is press up on the D-pad and have instant access to healing my tank. That is because I'm playing on controller and I simply have to press up on the D-pad. Again, the reason you want to do this is generally you want to buff the highest DPS. Generally Black Mage, Samurai, Machinist, Dragoon, Ninja. Of course, this is just a guideline because I've seen a Bard out DPS any one of these jobs whose players didn't really know the rotation well. But overall, it helps keeps the higher DPS jobs on top and putting the lower DPS jobs on bottom like Bard, Dancer, and more support jobs. As well as placing the tank where it makes sense for you. You can change the DPS sort by clicking on Roll Sort Settings at the bottom, scroll over to DPS, and move around which DPS you want on top and which ones you want on bottom. The last thing we need to speak about is the newly acquired Diurnal Sect. Pre-Endwalker Astro uses Diurnal Sect at level 30 and Nocturnal Sect at level 50. Think of these as Regen, Diurnal, and Shield, Nocturnal. These give you a Regen or Shield effect on specific spells and abilities. If you are playing in just 4-man content, then I recommend Diurnal Sect as it's a great beginner one to use as the Regens are more forgiving than Shields. Make sure it is turned on at the start of each dungeon as sometimes it can automatically turn off like Tank Stance if you play Tank or Fist of Fire for Monk. If you are in 8-man content, I will talk about that later as you only have access to Diurnal Sect as of right now. 
Education time over, let's jump into 30 to 49 content. We now have a few more skills in our arsenal to start utilizing Diurnal Sect. Level 34, Aspected Benefic. This is our first skill that changes depending on what sect we use. Again, as we only have Diurnal at this point, you can treat this as a small hill plus regen. If you've used White Mage before, this is pretty much like the regen ability. Level 42 skill, Aspected Helios. Our second skill that is affected depending on which sect we hold. This is a party-wide regen, similar to White Mage's Medica 2. Later, once you have Nocturnal Sect, this will be a party-wide heal and shield, similar to Scholar's Succor. Warning, these abilities are not active if you do not have Diurnal or Nocturnal turned on. You always need to have one active in order to use these skills, as well as at any time, you should always have a sect active. Dungeon runs will look something like this. Port into the dungeon, immediately use draw, and turn on diurnal sect. Tank begins pulling, aspected benefic onto tank, apply cards to a DPS, dot each enemy as you're running. When the tank stops, either aspect benefic again to reapply or aspected helios for a double regen. Lucid dreaming for MP mitigation and keep cards on cooldown and healing as necessary. It seems like there's a lot going on here, but it's simple once you get the hang of things. We draw a card immediately to get that 30 second cooldown going. Make sure to turn on your diurnal sect. We apply aspected benefic onto the tank after he pulls first aggro since we don't want to pull aggro from him, which will happen if you aspect benefic before they pull. You apply a card to a DPS as they're usually using AoE as you're running. Dot each enemy as you are running to contribute to DPS to the group, and you can run and dot at the same time. Tank stops, you can either reapply Aspect Benefic if it's going to run out, or Aspected Helios for a double regen to help keep the tank's HP topped up. Lucid Dreaming to keep your MP regeneration going as often as possible, and draw another card and apply to DPS. If you feel like the tank's health is getting too low or less than half, then you can just easily use Essential Dignity for your emergency heal, but it's also a good heal just so you don't have to long cast the Benefic. You do have access to your AoE, Damage Ability, Gravity. Be very careful with this skill as it will run down your MP so quick if you just spam and not paying attention for more than a few minutes. Again, this all sounds harder than what it is, but it's like this for every pool, so you'll get comfortable pretty quickly. Okay, education break time again. Go grab your coffee, pause the video, grab some snacks. We're now going to jump into the next section. You will have acquired Nocturnal Sect. This is the shield aspect that we talked about earlier. You will now have a choice in which sect you want to use in 4-man content. Honestly, my advice is if you're starting off, just use Diurnal Sect as it's more forgiving due to regen. In 8-man content, you now have the option to complement your fellow healer. If they are a white mage, then usually you'll want to use a shield aspect or a nocturnal sect. If they are scholars, then you'll want to use the regen aspect, Diurnal Sect. If they are also an astro, then you'll either talk it out and figure out which one they want to use, or just wait until they turn one on, and then you just do the other one. Seals divination, and minor akana. We now have access to seals, the moon, the crescent, and the sun. When drawing a card, it will still be pink or blue, but it will also have a seal at the top. The goal is to get three different seals so we can cast divination. One seal equals a party-wide buff of 4%, two seals, a party-wide buff of 5%, and three seals, a party-wide buff of 6%. These may not seem huge, but when you factor in other jobs as well as any buffs you had given out with the card, this can really stack up really quickly. Even though certain cards have certain seals, it's not worth remembering. Just remember that blue cards are for melee, pink cards are for range, and you can redraw for the seals you need. This is generally why it's nice to have a ranged DPS and a melee DPS in your party so no matter what color of the card you have, someone's gonna get the buff. As of right now, just work on practicing getting all three seal types. We get a skill later that makes this loads easier and makes it able to work into your regular routine. 
Let's say that you have two seals already and you want to get the third one, but you drew and you redrew and you didn't get the seal you want. Do you just take that third seal even though it's different? Well, yes and no. If you're close to a boss, then maybe, but if you have time in the dungeon until you get to the boss, then you can use Minor Akana. You can give up that card and seal for a buff of 8% damage for a party member. If the card is blue, then it's Lord of Crowns, which is for what again? Melee and tanks. If the card is pink, then the Lady of Crowns, which is for range and healers. I really want you guys to understand this, so if that was not clear enough, then I will leave a link down below where you can join my Discord and ask me directly and I'd be happy to help you. I will also leave a link to the website Salted14 which talks about Astrologian and advanced endgame level. Moving forward, level 50 content. Like my other practical healing guides for White Mage and Scholar, this is the bulk of where you'll be at when doing content until level 80. Level 50, Sinistry. Generate an etheric bond with a target party member. Each time you cast a single target healing spell on yourself or anyone else, the party member with Sinistry will also recover 40% of that original spell. It is kind of counterproductive to what we're working towards. We're working to not use Benefic 2, so the use of this ability goes down tremendously. That being said, the two most cases I use this is the tank health is super low and I don't have an essential dignity available for a huge heal, cast Sinistry and then Benefic 2 for a great potency heal. Or you have two tanks who are going to get a tank buster, cast this on one tank and use Benefic 2 on the other and both will receive healing. Again, not as many uses but it does have its place. Dungeon pulling will look something like this. Dungeon start, draw a card, diurnal sect, tank pulls first group, aspected Benefic on the tank, play card, draw another card, dot each enemy, once the tank stops, you can Aspect Benefic Refresh or Aspected Helios for a party-wide healing, Lucid Dreaming, and then AoE Gravity as needed. Keep an eye on your MP and make sure to draw your cards and throw out the buffs. Drawing cards gives you 800 MP back each time. At this point for the game for a beginner, keep your divinations for boss battles. If you start feeling comfortable then you can throw them out a little early but wait until later skills. It gets hard with just what you have now to get all three seal types with just draw and redraw ability. Let's now go over the rest of your skills and where they fit in. There will be no change to focus until level 70 which I will explain when we get there. I will also explain the difference between diurnal and nocturnal sex for each skill that it affects. Lastly, I will be giving you a different level 80 dungeon opener since we get so many new skills that affects what we do. Level 58, Collective Unconsciousness. This is your bubble skill so to speak. This one does have its quirks that when you cast this ability, you are unable to move. If you do, then it breaks the channel. Diurnal Sect reduces damage by 10% and applies Will of Fortune, regen for 18 seconds. Nocturnal Sect grants healing over time and applies Will of Fortune, reduces damage by 10%. Usually this ability is never channeled for duration and more used in a flash cast or instant cast kind of way. Your party members have to be in range of the bubble to get the effects. These have a completely different mindset depending on which sect you are using. Think of diurnal as a free healing on a short cooldown. Use often and on cooldown so you don't have to use a GCD heal like Benefic 2 or Helios. Nocturnal sex side of this ability is better to hold on to it for damage mitigation as the heal drops off instantly when you move or end the ability. Even if you're going to get less uses out of it, it's still better to use for big room wides or tank busters. Level 60, Celestial Opposition. Restore own HP and party member HP. Diurnal sect ability, regen, 15 seconds. Nocturnal Sect ability, Shield for 30 seconds. Use this skill as often as possible. It is pretty much a free aspected Helios in every way. Use this, abuse this because it is super powerful. Level 62, Earthly Star. 
deploys a 20 second potent AoE heal and damage ability on the ground. You can activate early for a weaker version, which is Earthly Dominance, or leave it for the full duration. After 10 seconds, it morphs into a stronger heal and damage ability, Giant Dominance. If you do not activate it, it will automatically activate at the end of the timer as the stronger ability. This is a delayed heal and damage ability. Absolutely great when you know the location where the tank is gonna stop for pools. It's also really great to activate right before boss battles as you can plop it down anywhere in range of you in order to do some early damage and early healing for your party. Level 70, Sleeve Draw. Draw a card from your divining deck that you currently don't have pretty much. Finally, this skill makes it a million times easier to get the seals you need. Opening in a dungeon or a trial will now look something like this just for the card portion. Draw at the beginning of the dungeon, play card for buff and seal, draw again in 30 seconds for another buff and seal, and then use sleeve draw to guarantee you get the seal you need for divination. This makes getting divination, your party wide buffs ability, so much easier and so much quicker and now you can work it into your rotation. Level 74 skill, Celestial Intersection. Restores own or target party member's HP. Diurnal Sect ability, Magic Barrier. Nocturnal Sect ability, Regen. As you can see, it gives you the opposite effect of the sect you're in. If you're using a Diurnal Sect, it gives a shield. If you're using a Nocturnal Sect, it gives a Regen. This is now your go-to skill before Aspected Benefic. Use it on cooldown every 30 seconds. This is what helps you keep your tank alive and healthy for most of the dungeon. Level 76 skill, Horoscope. Another delayed ability for healing. When cast gives your party members a horoscope, which in 10 seconds will heal your party for 200 potency. You can upgrade this ability during that duration by casting Helios or Aspected Helios, which will then upgrade it to Aspected Helios, which will last for 30 seconds with an even greater healing potency. Okay, let's break it down. You can throw this ability out anytime for some freebie healing. Always useful. Don't cast a Helios or Aspected Helios just to upgrade this ability. If you know you're going to cast one of those two spells, then use this ability first. Since the timer is so long, it's great to prepare in advance. Because the timer is so long, this really becomes effective in longer encounters in order to get some free healing when you may not have some OG CDs ready. Level 80, Neutral Sect. Increases healing magic potency by 20%. Gives you the both diurnal and nocturnal effects for all skills. Yes, you heard that right. You pretty much become the ultimate healer for 20 seconds, giving not only shields, but regens to party members in range. My favorite way to utilize this is as follows. Cast light speed, neutral sect, and then you instantly cast amazing huge healing and shields for your whole parties very, very quickly. Okay, with all this, let's go over what a dungeon pool would look like at level 80. Dungeon start, draw a card, diurnal sect or nocturnal, Tank pulls mob, celestial intersection, draw, play card if off cooldown, place earthly star where the tank stops, dot each enemies as you're running, celestial opposition, sleeve draw for the last seal, cast divination or hold on to for boss, gravity to heart's content. I know that seems like a lot, but really it's not. You're doing the same thing where you're drawing a card at the beginning of the dungeon. Instead of Aspected Benefic, you're using Celestial Intersection, and then you can use Aspected Benefic if he needs a little more help. You're placing your Earthly Star in order to damage the enemies when the tank stops pooling. Then you use Celestial Opposition in place of Aspected Helios for free party-wide regens or shields. Lastly, you're using Sleeve Draw for that last seal, to which then you can cast a Divination to boost all your damage if it's a huge mob, or keep it for a boss battle. Honestly, Astros have so many OG CDs that I rarely have to cast a GCD like Benefic or Helios. It is in such a strong place, and I personally feel like between the OG CDs, 
the card buffs, and the quick spell speed, I'm just super powerful all the time and super helpful and super efficient. There is so much more advanced stuff that we can talk about, but I'm gonna leave that up to you and how far you wanna take this job. I love playing this job for general content and it feels super strong. And I feel like I'm giving a lot of damage and a lot of buffs to everyone. I'm giving you a beginner's overview, which is even more advanced than some of the other healers. If you wanna learn more, then you can go over to Salted14 or you can jump into the Balance Discord and there's a lot of information there as well. Thank you for watching. If you're into social media and things, I have my Instagram down below as well as my Discord for my community. I also have me and my fiance's Instagram, Gamer Dudes. As always, if you want to watch more Final Fantasy tutorials, then you can click here.